Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and have breaking news for you. Some of you are already probably well aware that the U.S. Ronald Reagan and Carl Vinson Stride Group's training with the Japanese Navy in the Sea of Japan. That's here on June the 1st, 2017. Uh, Michael uh, Mikel D reported here on Twitter. It's worse in much other news as well. Also, Fox. Uh, bringing out a bit of this information as uh, Secretary Mattis is in the region. Listen to this here. Secretary James Mattis landing in Singapore overnight. He's meeting with diplomats from South Korea, Japan, and Australia for a key defense summit. The leaders will discuss North Korea's growing nuclear threat as well as America's security goals under President Trump. This is his second trip to the region since taking charge of the Pentagon. As we can see, uh, Secretary James Mattis in the region as well. Tensions building up with North Korea. You know, it was only a couple of weeks ago that uh, uh, China was saying that the storm clouds are gathering over North Korea. And uh, also Russia has expressed regret over new U.S. bans against North Korea. This has been reported by Press TV. It is stated in another news uh, source as well that Russia will not veto uh, the reaction of, uh, of the Security Council against North Korea. So will Russia permit the U.S. to do a strike on North Korea? That still remains to be seen. Don't know for sure as of yet if that's going to happen. But one thing that we have discovered just recently is a new look at prophecy of Daniel chapter 11, something I wanted to share with you here that's going to just change the entire region of what's going on. Now, as we've shared with you before already, we do believe that Daniel 1144 is what we're seeing with North Korea. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall affrighten him or greatly trouble him, cause him anxiety, as it might be said, and shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. In the King James Version, it says make away many. Uh, take away many, I think, is a little bit better word, verbiage there to be used. But... We know that this must be dealing with North Korea because, of course, North Korea not being the king of the north, but the king of the north dealing with the one that is over the NATO forces. Now, we're not talking about the general or anything over the NATO forces, but we're talking about Rome itself, how they conduct what goes on throughout the world. You don't believe that. Just look at the article we saw the other day where uh, President Trump was going to meet Pope Francis and says a, a, a higher authority than President Donald Trump as he meets with Pope Francis. So this is the authority, no doubt, that determines what goes down, what stays, etc. throughout the entire Middle East and Eastern theaters of the wars. Now, as we look at this, I also looked at North Korea as kind of being the flashpoint for this because why? Tidings out of the East and the North, China being the East, Russia being the Norse, they trouble him or frighten him. Why? Because both countries have large military forces built up around northern borders of North Korea. And China still as of yet as to declare why they're actually there other than to say dealing with refugees. I don't think China needs the S-300 advanced missiles, defense missile system on the northern border with North Korea to deal with refugees, nor Russia's Balkium and S-300 and S-400 systems near the border of North Korea to deal with refugees either. In fact, Russia has warned the United States not to use military force against North Korea because of a nuclear clear fallout that it can cause them. So when we look at tidings out of the east and out of the north, trouble him or frighten him, it seems like that this is the big issue for the United States as, uh, as they lead the NATO forces against North Korea. Now that could also completely spiral out of control, not just with North Korea, but also Syria, the theater there where Russian special forces have moved closer to the Jordanian border to observe the U.S. and British forces and what they are doing just across the border. al tanf another tenuous area inside of Syria. But that brings me to another interesting biblical prophecy that I wanted to share with you. And that is as we begin to look at verse 40, 
uh, knowing that verse 39 goes all the way back to World War I when the British Empire, uh, with the help of a foreign god, which I believe is Rome, actually takes and they go and uh, they uh, will help them to rule over many and shall divide the land for a price. World War I, the breaking up the Ottoman Empire and the dividing of the entire region into Syria, Lebanon, Israel, and of course uh, Iraq. These countries were all divided up. Then it says, at the time of the end, naturally World War I was not the time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him. And the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships. And he shall enter into the countries, plural, and shall overflow as he passes through. Now, my friends, I want you to really pay, pay close attention now. You're going to see this prophecy here. And, and uh, I've got to get back down there to it because I blew it up a little bit here. We're going to see Prophecy chapter 40 in a completely different light, no doubt. So I wanted to blow it up so you can see this a, a little bit better on your screen here. All right. Now what we are looking at right here, this is Melech Nagiv, which is the king of the south or the king of the Nagiv, the desert in Israel. That lets us know the king of the south is an Israeli leader. Now, I don't say that Benjamin Netanyahu is that Israeli leader, but I can tell you one thing. He's the only prime minister that Israel ever elected that they went through the streets and cried, Bibi, or Bini, King of the Jews. That was in 1996 when he was first elected prime minister and was also anointed by Mike Evans to be king over Israel. He might have said he'll be prime minister in his prophecy not once but twice, but you do not anoint a man for a leadership of a country unless it's a king. So the Melech Nagiv, Nagiv, I believe, is none other than Prime Minister Netanyahu. But here's what's interesting. And at that time of the end shall the king of the south push at him. It doesn't say at him in Hebrew. It says right here, uh, excuse me. They will push with him. He pushes with him. With who? With the king of the north. All right? And, and you could translate, we could translate on here where it says, uh, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind. But I don't think that that's correct either. Because when you look at this and we see how it's going, if he's pushing with him over the enemies around Israel, if he's pushing with him, he would, in this case here, we take the word aliyah, instead of being against him, we can translate this as well as above him or over him. Melech HaTzephon, above or over him. The king of the north will come above him or over him. Berekeva. Rekev, Rekev, which is the chariots, uh, 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 and, and as, as with a storm, okay, he comes over him. How does he come over him? Because with the C-130 aircrafts carrying all this chariots and armament, flying that into the region, as well as by what? By ships. Uh, he comes in there with horsemen, with ships, and he shall enter into what? The countries, not Israel. If he was coming against Israel, just against Israel, he would come to one country. But he comes, he's pushing with him against the enemies of Israel. What? Syria, Iran, Lebanon, Iraq. You know, you remember all the threats that the Iraqi president was making against uh, before uh, President Bush takes him down? He was making against Israel. He would launch, and he did. He launched Scud missiles into Israel. Remember, before President Bashar al-Assad was the president, and how in the 67 war, Israel had to deal with Syria as well? Remember how Hezbollah constantly attacking Israel? See, so he's pushing with him. He's pushing with the king of the north to do what? to send in this armada to completely take down the Middle East. No wonder why the prophecy says that even Jordan becomes a desolation. I, got, I, I tell you something, I'm excited. I'm excited because I didn't take the time to really look at this in the Hebrew language. And when I saw this the other day, Imam Melech HaNagiv, that I know that it's with him, the king of the south is pushing with who? The king of the north, and then he overflows. He comes in like a storm. That's why it shouldn't be against him, but above him, because the storm goes over you. And what does the U.S. have the ability to do? It's not, and by the way, President Trump is not the king of the north either. 
I think it's the Pope of Rome is the king itself. And the Pope of Rome is what dictates what country should go down. This is why the war in the Middle East as well. They're taking down any religion that don't agree with them, and only the Sunnis are being left to, to survive this. The Shiites are not so much for the Vatican, but the Sunnis are. You know, take out them. Take out the Eastern Christians that have a little bit different theology than what uh, Catholicism has, no doubt. So this is the prophecy that we're looking at, and I think this is the time frame that we are in. And even all this is still happening, look at here. President Putin still trying to find a way to make amends with the U.S. to get all this nonsense to end. Putin calls on American businessmen to help restore dialogue between the U.S. and Russia. The man keeps trying his best to reach out to America. He's tried it through the reporters, he's tried it through media, now he's trying to do it through businessmen and still falling on deaf ears. I think the tidings out of the east and out of the north is going to backfire and I believe not only that but we're looking at the prophecies here in Daniel 11. This is dealing with the entire Middle East and of course North Korea and uh, with the with Russia and China over there is only going to make it even get worse he shall enter also into the beauteous land and many countries shall be overthrown but these shall be delivered out of his hand Adam Moab and the chief children of Ammon in other words he's not attacking Rome he's not attacking the, the Palestinians and he's not attacking the Jordanians but the prophecy speaks about how that Jordan and uh, Moab, all of them will be destroyed and become desolate as well. And no doubt, because when the battle is pushed, when they push against uh, Bashar al-Assad, when they attack Iran, it's going to backfire and it's going to engulf the entire region in war and many people will die. So many shall be taken away. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. This will air on the Noon Institute as well because of powerful prophetic insight to share with the world. Share it with as many people as you possibly we can. I encourage you. This is too, too incredible of, of, a, of a message not to share it with all your friends that you possibly can on all the sites that you can possibly get it out to, there to Facebook, etc. And also, we thank you for those of you that, that have felt in your heart to support this work that we're doing here on Israeli News Live. And if you'd like to be a part of that, please go IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can donate there online or at the end of the broadcast as it's ending here. You can see on your screen uh, our, our mailing address here in the Czech Republic. We will be here for until the end of July. Uh, we will then be coming to the United States. We will actually use an updated address in the United States. We'll update that later. If mail still comes here, we still uh, have family here that will pick up the mail for us. So, But we will update you for an American address while we're in America later and uh, we'll bring that out to you. But if you would like to be a part, thank you. You can also donate right here if you're on Israeli News Live's YouTube channel. Look above the subscribe button. You can help donate there as well. God bless you, thank you. Don't forget Saturday night, this Saturday night, Israeli News Live, Direct TV, channel 367, most of the country. If you're in Nevada, channel 17, Israeli News Live appears on channel 17 as well. Virgin Islands, I believe there's another channel, not sure what channel it's on in the Virgin Islands, but you can catch it there. It is going to be a power pack of a message coming out on World Harvest Television Network. Anyway, God bless you, thank you, and thank you for helping us to get the word out to the world. Shalom.